Hello guys, what's up? I'm Brian here doing another video for you guys and this time we're reviewing Transformers Cyberverse Episode 2. So what happens in Episode 2? Basically what happened in Episode 1 is Bumblebee and Windblade try to do the cortical psychic patch thing. It doesn't work and they get knocked out. They wake up and oh no, Decepticons have found them. So they have a little fight and they eventually knock out the Decepticons and they decide, you know, those Decepticons probably have a, a nice little ship somewhere. We better go check that out. And so they do and they find this cortical psychic patch thing and they try to kind of squeeze together their cortical psychic patch to make a super cortical psychic patch. And when Blade goes into Bumblebee's mind to try to recover his damaged memories because pretty much a lot of them are blanked out or glitching. One of the things I absolutely do love is Windblade referencing that she is a city speaker. They don't necessarily need to do that, but they did it anyways, and I'm glad. Does that mean that we'll have Metroplex at some point in time? So Bumblebee apparently can use his voice in his memory, which makes sense. I mean, why would his voice box be damaged in his memories? Um, and basically they try to figure out something. Uh, eventually Bumblebee remembers who Windblade is and they have hugging stuff. Because the show should have been called Transformers Hug Wars. Because there's constantly hugging. But uh-oh, Starscream calls and figures out that Bumblebee is on the ship and he's gonna go after them and oh no, what? So yeah, that's basically the episode. Um, you know, it's not bad, you know, it's still trying to introduce the plot of the series, you know, you're... Bumblebee's got his memories wiped out and they're trying to figure it out. You know, that's fine. I do like the fact that we get a lot of Cybertron. At, you know, it's from the memories, of course, of Bumblebee. Um, but it's still cool to see. I kind of want a show that just focuses on Transformers on Cybertron. It doesn't have to take place on Earth at any point in time. Just have Cybertron. Come on, that's the cool part. But with that, again, I'm curious what they will do, uh, moving on from the show. One of the things I don't like, and I don't want to disrespect the voice actor, I do not care for the voice of Thundercracker. And I don't necessarily blame the voice actor himself, but it just does not fit Thundercracker. I don't know, it's just, w when I look at him, I just don't see that voice connected to him. I will, however, say something. Some people thought that the Purple Seeker in the show was Skywarp, and no, that is actually Nova Storm, thanks to the credits of the show, who is a female Decepticon Seeker, which I really do like that we're getting more of. But yeah, with that out of the way, it pretty much just introduces the premise yet again, or furthers the premise of the show. And again, the animation looks great, the, the coloring is nice, you know, it's uh, animated well, I guess. It's definitely got its own aesthetic, which I do like. Although I will say the jet modes for the Seekers look weird. It almost looks like it has two cockpits and just too many different colors. It's just, I don't get it. But other than that, I liked the episode. I thought it was fine. I want to see what more they can do. So with that out of the way, that is pretty much it. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, and all this fun. Do that tell. See you guys next time.